Collegial athletics is changing rapidly, whether any of us wants it to or not. This is evidenced by a critical Supreme Court decision and landmark legislation from several states across the country. Issues such as name, image, and likeness, declining cable television subscriptions, college football playoff expansion, the transfer portal, and the impact of a global pandemic on sports, just to name a few, have proved that a transformation in collegiate athletics is happening around us. While our university has enjoyed over 25 years in the Big 12 Conference, we recognize that we must be willing to make changes with our eyes on the future. In a world of uncertainty and change, it is incumbent upon us as leaders to protect and enhance our athletic program and university. In order to do so, we looked at conferences across the country and concluded that the SEC is the best fit for our future. The reasons are many. The stability and strength of the league and its leadership. The level of visibility for our student athletes. Some of the toughest athletic competition and exciting stadiums that are similar in capacity and attendance to ours. It should also be noted that this move allows us to protect and rekindle some key rivalries, including the chance to regularly compete with the University of Oklahoma, University of Arkansas, and Texas A&M University. On Monday, we alerted the Big 12 that we would not be renewing our grant of rights agreement in 2025, four years down the road. We told the Big 12 that we intend to honor our current agreement while knowing that notice now is the fairest way to allow the conference to plan for its future beyond 2025. On Tuesday, we sent a letter to the Southeastern Conference requesting membership in that conference at the end of our current agreement. Yesterday afternoon, the SEC unanimously voted to accept our request and invited us to join them in 2025. I want to thank the SEC leadership, Commissioner Sankey, and the chancellors and presidents of the SEC for their support of this move. I especially want to thank the new president of Texas A&M, Catherine Banks, for her support. And I concur with the conclusion that this is the best outcome for the flagship institutions of both of these key university systems of Texas. <clears throat> Finally, I'd like to thank my colleague, OU President Joe Harris. I know we're both looking forward to continuing our 120-year-old rivalry.